On YouTube, you can post a variety of things such as vlogs, pranks, live streams, etc. But another niche on YouTube is animation. Throughout the years on YouTube, we've been blessed with amazing creators who make animations such as Meet Canyon and Lee Hardcastle. They make animations with a horror twist. But shockingly, there have been some darker animations posted to YouTube, and sometimes the man behind the camera is more disturbing than their content. In today's video, we talk about YouTube's darkest animations. The first person that we will be talking about is the one and only Meat Canyon. Hunter August Hancock, Cock. Widely known as Meat Canyon or Papa Me is a versatile American content creator active on YouTube, TikTok, and live streaming platforms. He is recognized for his parody animations that take iconic characters from Western media and infuse them with a disturbing yet comedic twist. Hunter's unique art style aims to evoke a sense of unease or horror. Some of his notable animations include Wabbit Season, Just Beyond the Golden Arches, When You Wish Upon a Star, and Jawbreaker. Although he established his channel on September 6th, 2015, his first video wasn't uploaded until January 27th, 2017. His content spans a range of creative roles, including writing, directing, voice acting, and comedy. On December 30th of 2023, Meat Canyon posted on his main channel announcing that he is leaving temporarily and doesn't know when he'll come back. He's leaving because he didn't feel happy with his content and it felt like he was being forced to push out videos just to get more money and subscribers. But from the looks of it, he will still be active on his second channel, which is called Papa Meat. As you can tell, this video is titled YouTube's Darkest Animations. And Meat Kenyon has certainly made some pretty dark and disturbing content. However, in this case, Hunter is a very respected artist in the community. And just because he makes dark, creepy videos does not mean that he is a bad guy because honestly, I love watching his second channel and he is such a funny and chill dude. Missing Halloween. Missing Halloween stands as an iconic animated short film created by Mike and L, released on October 30th, 2015, and has amassed over 30 million views for its intriguing dark narrative. The silent film revolves around a boy named Nick eagerly awaiting his friend on Halloween night. Although the characters remain unnamed in this silent piece, fans have dubbed the main character as Nick. The animation kicks off with Nick spotting his friend outside, prompting him to rush out while his mother investigates the visitor. Following a snapshot of the two kids taken by Nick's mom, they embark on a trick-or-treating adventure. The story takes a poignant turn with a flashback to a year earlier, depicting how Nick and Mary first crossed paths. Nick, finding himself locked out, discovers Mary sitting on the curb in front of his home. A simple act of kindness, offering her a piece of candy, initiates their connection. The candy unwraps to reveal a message, you found me. Returning to the present, Nick attempts to make more friends during Halloween, but other kids show indifference. Curiously, despite being alone Alongside Nick, Mary is ignored by those distributing candy during trick-or-treating, completely ignoring her and act like if she's invisible. Post trick-or-treating, Nick and Mary enjoy their candies on a hill where once again, Mary finds the message, you found me on her candy wrapper. Upon returning home, a doctor is seen conversing with Nick's parents. Nick, sensing a peculiar situation, playfully snatches the doctor's documents, only to discover a diagnosis stating he has imaginary friends. The revelation that Mary isn't real leaves Nick desperate to prove her existence, yet his efforts are met with disbelief from those around him. Following this, Nick and Mary return to the hill, where Nick then touches her face to confirm Mary's existence. Mary, annoyed by Nick's constant touch, stands up and heads towards the wooden area surrounding them, marked with a danger sign warning of bear traps. Undeterred, Mary finds an opening and rushes into the woods with Nick following closely. As they navigate the forest, unintentionally triggering bear trap, Mary eventually rests by a tree. Nick joins her unharmed, and they set together to enjoy their candy. Notably, Nick's candy wrapper reads, I found you, while Mary's wrapper states, you found me. The animation then shifts with a white flash to the parents desperately searching for their son. Amid their distress, the parents eventually locate Nick. However, the revelation goes beyond a mere reunion, as it becomes apparent that Mary has been real all along. Nick lies next to her now decomposed corpse. Now this short film is very sad and dark, but it is beautifully animated, and I do recommend recommend the watch. My narration isn't giving this short film any justice because the score is also amazing as well.
Nelson's brother. This is a weird one. This video titled Nelson's brother was posted onto YouTube on April 7th, 2019. This is a claymation of a dog that's presumably Nelson's brother. You see the dog play with his spinning toy and then this happens. <laughs> Yeah, very weird stuff. Also, I figured out who Nelson is and it's this infamous meme photo of a dog. I feel like this video was only made as a passion project for the meme and honestly, it's just a weird animation. Not that disturbing or dark, but it's just weird. Henry Eats. Henry Eats is a classic OG horror video that was posted to YouTube on December 13th, 2013. However, in the description, the artist states that this was his first short film that he made back in 2003. Henry Eats is a short animated film created by British artist and animator Ben Wheelie. The story unfolds with the brain-like creature devouring the heads of miniature figure-like men. The perspective widens to reveal that this creature resides inside the head of the standing dude. Later, I identified as Henry Eats, who lives in a cabin in the woods. A peculiar tooth fly equipped with a spigot connects to the standing dude, pouring fluid into a mug. The narrative shifts to a small door opening to unveil a crawling dude who emerges to sit from the mug through a straw before retreating into his space. The day concludes at 6 o'clock. The cycle seems to set to repeat the next day, but a twist occurs. Deep in the woods, we encounter the dinosaur, a symbol of death, advancing towards towards the standing dude's home. Daily routines unfold as usual until the dinosaur, swiftly reaching the crawling dude, decapitates him. Proceeding to the standing dude, the dinosaur is poisoned for a similar fate. But the scene transitions back to the brain creature at the critical moment. The miniature men on the conveyor belt cease, signifying the demise of the standing dude. Outside the cabin, the headless standing dude appears at the window, accompanied by the haunting Henry Eats theme. The screen fades, concluding the short film. With all honesty, I have no idea what this animation means. It is pretty, uh, I guess unnerving, disturbing, not really that dark, but definitely a weird piece of media. Lee Hardcastle. Lee Hardcastle, a British YouTuber and animator, gained fame for his graphic claymation videos. He started on YouTube in 2006 with the video titled For R Words in the Woods. Initially using toy G.I. Joe figures, he later incorporated clay in animations, as seen in Toilet Doom. Lately, he's expanded his collaborations, working with major players like Adult Swim, Bethesda, Disney, and others. His unique claymation style sets him apart in the world of animated content creation. Lee is an icon in the claymation space, so I want to talk about my two personal favorite claymations that he has made. And before I get any comments saying that claymation is not animation, because this is not considered a cartoon, well if you google it, it actually states that claymation is a type of animation, so I'm considering claymation in this video. The first video I want to talk about is Hamster Hell. Hamster Hell is an adult horror series. The first episode of the series called Arrival aired on October 5th, 2011. Episodes started to air with without a regular schedule, but were released every three to four weeks on average. The final episode, Death, aired on March 8th, 2012. These were originally posted as eight different uploads to the Lee Hardcastle channel, but has since been unlisted. They were unlisted because on June 12, 2012, Lee decided to add all eight shorts into one full video, which that upload has gained over 20 million views. Chapter one of the series is called Arrival, and it's about this kid getting a hamster without the permission of his parents. It turns out that the kid has another hamster in the room. Then for some reason, the new hamster pees on the face of the gray hamster. I don't know why. Chapter two is titled White, and it shows the two hamsters fighting. When the kid finds out about the fighting, he decides it's a smart idea to split the hamster habitat into two different sections, separating the two hamsters with a wall of tape. However, the orange hamster easily took down the wall of tape and got stuck, which led the gray hamster to R-word the orange hamster. Chapter three is titled titled Fun World, which the kid makes a homemade amusement park for the hamsters, where he basically a 
which is the orange hamster. Now to skip around a little bit, it is later revealed that the orange hamster is pregnant and gives birth to baby hamsters. The kid finds the babies and is pretty fascinated. The kid quickly grabs his hamster for dummy's book and reads this message. Do not touch the babies. If you do, the mother will eat them. Despite reading this, the kid simply ignores that message and plays with the baby hamsters. After putting the babies back into the habitat, the orange hamster sees a delicious number four quarter pounder with cheese meal with a large sprite and eats the meal. Then it cuts to the perspective of the gray hamster and he sees the mother eat its babies. Which by the way, that's actually a real thing. So if your hamster has babies, do not touch the babies or else like it'll remove the baby scent and the hamster will eat its babies. It's a true thing. In the next chapter, you see the kid's reaction to the aftermath and he is in disbelief and out of shock, he grabs the orange hamster and hits it with a hammer. After he just killed his hamster, he puts it back into the box and cries to sleep. Since this kid is horrible at taking care of his pets, of course he forgets to feed them. Since there's no more food in the box, it causes the gray hamster to resort to cannibalism and eats his dead wife. In the final chapter, you see the kid's reaction to this gruesome scene and I don't know why, but the face on the kid is hilarious to me. But out of frustration, he throws the box at the wall and yeets the gray hamster out of the window. Finally, the kid cries like a loser, concluding the film. This claymation is pretty gruesome and dark, but it does have a pretty amazing story, basically telling you that pets are not toys. Another iconic claymation from Lee Hardcastle is the infamous Simpsons couch gag, where you see the Simpsons family get brutally murdered. This was uploaded on December 17th, 2015. The video starts off with the family watching TV at night, while the environment of the room looks very creepy. Then the bullies, aka Jimbo, Kearney, and Dolph, break into the house so they can kill the Simpsons. Before doing so, Bart goes up to the window and gets shot by a crossbow. Once the bullies enter the house, Homer tries to call the police, but Jimbo uses a machete to cut Homer's hand. Following that, Dolph then gets a shotgun and puts it up to Homer's head, which has to be the most gruesome scene in the video. The bullies then torture Marge and unalive Maggie off screen. Marge, who is still alive, fights back successfully, but tragically she's been hit by the machete again, causing her to lose a lot of blood. Surprisingly, Lisa's the only surviving member left of the family, but then police officer Wiggum shoots Lisa, which is morbidly funny, because that is something that officer Wiggum would do in the show. Although this animation is very dark and gruesome, you can't ignore the hard work that was put into this clay Mation. Dolly Flesh. Langton Allen LeBute, also known as Dolly Flesh, is a Canadian individual with severe autism whose online presence as a YouTuber, animator, vlogger, and sculptor took a very dark turn. Known for creating clay animations with disturbing content, his actions in 2019 led to significant legal consequences. LeBute's internet journey began in 2016 when he started posting clay gore and dismemberment on Instagram under the name Misery Magic. Later that year, he launched a YouTube channel where he showed shared violent and gory content created in 2013. His clay stop motion animations often feature disturbing elements akin to creators like David Firth or Lee Hardcastle. Notably, one reoccurring character, Itchy the Clown, drew inspiration from the serial killer John Wayne Gacy. He's even made a sculpture replicating the Pogo the Clown painting. Now, all of his accounts have been taken down, but archives do exist. And oh boy, dude, his animation, claymation, photos, and videos are one of the goriest things I've ever seen and I do not recommend to look up his artwork on Google. Just don't do that. I don't mean or want to praise his work, but I'll admit, he surely knows how to make stop motion and sculpt, which is a very hard thing to do from my personal experience. But what he makes is just flat out disgusting and disturbing, so once again, I don't recommend looking at his work. Now, if we compared his work to a respected artist like Lee Hardcastle, for example, some may argue that it's the same. However, I would disagree because Lee's work actually has a compelling storyline to the animation. And plus, not every other scene is gory. There's an actual story being told within the claymation, but when it comes to Dolly Flesh's stop motions, there's no story. It's just kill, kill, and kill. Which makes him as the individual disturbing, not necessarily his work. Well, his work is very disgusting and disturbing, but you know what I'm trying to say. In May 2019, LeBue posted a vlog on YouTube showcasing him playing with three new hamsters 
sisters. However, a subsequent video depicted the torture and killing of these animals through stabbing, amputation, drowning, crushing, and microwaving. The video was taken down and authorities were alerted by concerned fans. Labu faced legal consequences when he was arrested on May 25th, 2020 for two counts of murder and abuse related to the hamsters. Despite being released on a $1,000 bail, his trial took place on August 16th, 2021. He received an 18-month conditional sentence and four to five years of supervision, with conditions including a social media ban, curfew, and prohibited from entering pet shops. During this trial, Lebu expressed boredom and entertainment as motivations for the animal cruelty, lacking remorse. His arrest sparked protest for his imprisonment, leading to conditions such such as the termination of his main YouTube channel in January 2022. A former friend revealed abuse disturbing interests, including idolizing serial killers, planning harm to classmates, and sending inappropriate content. Labute's actions were theorized to be influenced by his experience with bullying in school. He was clearly a disturbing individual, made disturbing artwork, etc., and he should be locked up for, you know, forever. Dolly Flesh may have been a creep by making his weird videos and you know, well, what I just said, he's like a very disturbing individual, but him as a person is very weird and I don't condemn bullying, but I understand why he was bullied because one of the videos that he posted onto YouTube was him wanting to lose his V card to a spicy doll. In my other video, I claimed I was looking forward to losing my Bruh. to a forward slutty hot girl. I meant to say a forward slutty Silicone cell. I'm the type of guy that never wants to have kids. But if you decide to have babies with a doll, you don't have to worry about it starving or being killed. How often will you find a girlfriend that's custom designed and perfect the way you look, or even one without arms and legs? Maybe you'll get tired of screwing her and her plastic bum and want to move to her ear canals, which are stretchier than real human ear canals. If you don't have a poo fetish, then you won't have to worry about her pooing or farting all the time. Yeah, he is just a weirdo. Huge shout out to Turkey Tom because he did make an amazing documentary on Dolly Flesh. So I do recommend his video after this one. But I just had to cover Dolly Flesh in one of my videos because like what? Over a year ago, maybe almost two years ago, I was compared to Dolly Flesh in the comments for like multiple videos. I'm not gonna lie. That was kind of funny how I, I mean, I'll admit I did kind of look like Dolly Flesh. Freaking Tub roasted me on Twitter comparing me to Dolly Flesh, which by the way, I didn't take offense to that. I think it was a very very funny joke and yeah my fault for having that hairstyle which I do regret damn for the record I didn't know who he was when I had that hairstyle but that that, that was funny low-key that was funny but uh, luckily I don't have that hairstyle anymore and that is the end of YouTube's darkest animations go follow me on my other social medias and go get yourself something nice at earldoesexist.com using my link in the description below to support the channel but other than that thank you guys for all the support recently it does mean a lot to me but I'll see you guys in my next video see you guys